the doctor came up to me and he said, well, I don't know how to tell you this um, a nice way. And he just said, you've got 12 months to live. It's not easy. It's never easy to turn around and say to someone, you have a horrific illness that could kill you. No matter how many times you say this, it is still another person that you're talking to and his life is completely changed. His dreams, his goals, his aspiration, everything has completely changed in that moment. When you're given an end date in your life, it plays on your mind with everything you do. Having to try and give some realistic hope to someone is a challenge. When you're driving home with no one around, you remember every patient that you have given the bad news. My dad's that type of person that jokes around and is very talkative. So when he was really sick, he wasn't that kind of person anymore. In a way, I lost my identity because I had a great job, paid well, and then all of a sudden it was just taken away from me instantly because I got that sick, I couldn't work. Because of your cancer, you suddenly have these big expenses popping up. The $900 scan that's not always funded by Medicare and your rent doesn't stop because you've got cancer, but your income pretty much does. The financial burden is just um, too much to deal with. Cancer treatment is constantly evolving. There are drugs which can make a huge improvement in our cancer patients, which are available, have been proven, but not on PBS yet. What that looks like in reality is me saying to someone, this could cost you $10,000 of treatment. This drug can only be funded if the patient pays for it. The patients become angry, desperate, frustrated. They just basically give up. They lose hope. Once you lose that, your body stops fighting properly. You get depressed, you get worse fatigue, you get worse symptoms, and you just start to wonder what's the point. I do not believe a patient should be deprived of a treatment because of cost. I think we can do a lot better than that. I was a bit of a guinea pig going on to the immunotherapy trial, but when you look back at it and you've only been given 12 months to live, you'll take anything to try and get better. I was lucky enough that for me it was immunotherapy. If I had have been paying for it, it would have cost around $183,000. It's just money that I haven't got. Potentially I would have had to have sold my house to pay for something because you could do anything to get better. Once he got better, I had hope again. It was like a roller coaster. You go in feeling really scared and then you come out having the best time of your life. All of a sudden to be given hope, it was the most amazing feeling I've ever had in my entire life. It not only gives you hope to live longer, but also to have a plethora of new drugs, new immune therapies. They do so well on treatment and you get to turn around and say, it's finished, your cancer is gone. The words that the doctors are actually using now is remission, cure. A gift of hope is a contribution financially that we can give to a patient to give them hope throughout their cancer journey. To live longer, be at the next birthday, to attend that marriage, all of those milestones. In Australia at the moment, the diagnosis of cancer excluding superficial melanomas is soon to become one in two. Without these gifts of hope, it's quite possible that you or the person you're in a relationship with or one of your children is going to become one of these cancer patients that does not get the treatment. The reason why we need to donate is that fundamental responsibility that we have for a fellow human being. When I was given 12 months to live, I had an end date. Now I don't have an end date. I, I just live every day like it's the best day I'm ever going to have. Of all the forces that make for a better world, none is so indispensable, none so powerful as hope.